Here is one of our introductory videos on the LAB color space and this is going to be a quick and dirty on how to uh, do some major color adjustment improvements and also a little bit of sharpening extremely quickly and much better than you could ever do in the RGB color space. It's true. Okay, first thing we're going to do is change over to the LAB color space. You can see we're in RGB now. Do that by going to Image, Mode, and LAB. Now, yes, we're in the LAB color space. So let's take a very quick look at how uh, some of the very basic things about how LAB is different from RGB. Open up a Curves dialog box, and the first thing we're going to see is that we have three channels here, similar to RGB, red, green, and blue, only this one we have lightness A and B. L of LAB stands for lightness. A and B stand for absolutely nothing. Uh, but do know this. The lightness channel, this is where we do all our adjustments to uh, contrast, brightness, tonality of pixels without affecting color at all because it's a separate channel. In the A channel, you have two primary colors. Number one is green and the other one is magenta. And in the B channel of LAB, you have two more primary colors, blue and yellow. So you have four primary colors in LAB and the two pairs of, in the A, green and magenta, and in the B, blue and yellow. So, as this is a quick and dirty uh, tutorial here, let's just get to work right now. Let's get into channel A. And what we want to do is start playing around with this inside this grid. We want to do two things before we play around inside this grid. Number one, I would like you to do an option click on a Mac or an alt click on a Windows in order to get more grid lines in here. Get a 10 by 10 rather than the default, which is, I don't even know what it is anymore, 5 by 5? Anyway, we want a 10 by 10. Also, what we want to do is we want to switch the gradient. If you look down here on your panel, what you're going to see is black down here and white up here. I need you to reverse that. And the way to reverse that is to go here, click on Curves Display Options, and select Pigment Ink Percent. Okay. Now grab this, slide it in by two, can see the numbers on the bottom I want to bring it to 20 and on the top I want to bring that down to 80 I want to bring that down from 100 down to 80 and I want to do the same thing on channel B I want to bring them in on both sides exactly the same so the center line will continue to cross or the line rather will continue to cross exactly in the center so I'm going to bring this one in again by two mostly I'm just looking at those numbers and bring this down to 80. There it is. We are done. And look at that difference. It is spectacular. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the lightness channel and I'm going to do this very similar to what you would do in an RGB image. What I want to do is pull the lights up a little bit and pull the brighter pixels and make them a little bit brighter and take the darker pixels and make them a little bit darker to add a little bit more contrast to this image although it's pretty reasonable so far because we have switched the gradients here when you come down here this is the brighter part of the pixels let me click this hand and move this to you I'm gonna come right up here on the Sun and look at the little circle on the graph there you see it coming down to, yeah, that is going to be, regardless of the output-input numbers, what it is telling you, um, the brightest of the brights are going to be 100, and the blackest of the blacks, I'm going to come down here, way up here, uh, in LAB are zero. So this, again, regardless of your gradient, is opposite to what you are going to see in RGB. Blacks are zero, and the brightest of the bright are 100. 
what I'm going to do is I am going to turn off my hand guy here and I am going to click in here to drop a point, an adjustment point, and I'm going to brighten up the brights a little bit by dragging this down just a touch. And I'm going to come up here, drop a point, and bring that up above that diagonal line just a touch, not much at all. There is the adjustment to the contrast. So we've ramped up the color beautifully. We've done contrast. The last thing we're going to do is work with a little bit of sharpening. So click on the image, the background image. Now come to channels. Now click on lightness. And now we're going to sharpen. Filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Now here's the beauty of sharpening in LAB. If you do sharpening in an RGB image, and in fact every single time you do sharpening in an RGB image, you are changing colors. It might be to a little degree, it might be to a larger degree, depending on how much you sharpen, but you cannot sharpen in an RGB image without affecting the color. And this is simply not good, because again, depending on how much sharpening you do, you could create JPEG artifacts in your colors, it could create garish, ugly, tiny little halos of color around uh, some colored pixels that you don't want. This is something to avoid, and then with LAB, you get to avoid it 100% because lightness, where you do your contrast and your sharpening, is a completely different channel, and it 100% colors are unaffected. Well, I've got this one set at 200 and a radius of 1 and a threshold of 10. I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that. Turn on the full LAB, and we're done. It's absolutely amazing. Now, if I did not do all my talk and all my blah blah and all the rest of it, all that work would have taken literally 30 seconds, and I guarantee you, if you try to make this image look as good as this in RGB, you will still be working on it, and you will never get it as good as this. For images that seriously need more vibrant colors and they need sharpening, there's only one color space to work in, and that is LAB. There's the before, and there's the after, and that would have been a total of a maximum of 30 seconds. Okay, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.